Hello, Sky friends, and welcome to Seasons of Skyrend, Book 4. We're a custom 5e D&D adventure that focuses on the stories of our characters as they seek to change the world, and how the world responds in turn. I am your host and DM, Scott, and you can find me on Twitter at TheScottBlake. Hi, I'm Chris, and you can find me at EwokKiller on Twitter. I play Finnegan Finn Tempest, a tiefling trainer, which is a Skyrim original class supported by the Metalweave Games supplement Baby Beastry. Finn is the trainer of Cerulius, a blue guard drake. Hi, my name is Nate. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Nate. I play Darvin Grimm, the human monk, and I am currently hosting Cade, the demigod of the land in my brain. Hi, I'm Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Shannon. I play Aranus Gray, the god of rebellion, and I am a half-elf bard. You can also find the show on Twitter at Skyren Podcast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Head on over to find out about bonus chapters, early access, NPC creation, and more. Now then, thank you for joining us, and please enjoy this chapter in Seasons of Skyren. Heading south down the road, out of the autumn belt, into the winter belt, where things get cold and dark. The ocean branch overhead gets colder and colder until it is frozen solid again, and there is just a road of ice running down south, branching off here and there to lesser branches, a main vein of it still heading south, not directly above the road, but Visible now and again, glinting in the moonlight, or off the campfire light. As the temperature drops, everyone certainly has to bundle up some more. Bigger coats, thicker boots. But you have prepared. People have the provisions they need to stay warm. There's more sleeping in the wagons, or sleeping in tents, or sleeping around the campfire. There's less just wandering off, but people will be fine. As you travel south... Down the road. Darwin and Aranus. I think Sam would know this too. You know you're not that far from Honey Hollow now. You're getting closer. However that feels like for you, I don't know. It's a site of victory and it's a site of loss. But it's coming. The road goes right by Honey Hollow. And as you get closer, everybody roll perception. Mm. What die do I want to roll? I'm going to roll the wooden die. Am I rolling for Cyril too? Yeah, you can roll for Cyril as well. Ooh, well, um, Finnegan crit. Hmm. What does that bring your total to, Finnegan? 22. 22. What about Cyril? It's a 15. Okay. Darvin. I got a 10. Hmm. Aranus? 21. Okay. Here in the winter belt, it is dark all the time. You might get some moonlight, some starlight, occasional other less natural sources of light. Sometimes you can just see the sunrise way, way, way off in the distance. But by the time you get to Honey Hollow, it is effectively dark. The sky is fairly clear tonight. There's some moon, but not a lot. You still need your torches to light the way to travel down the road. And as you approach Honey Hollow, Darvin, you're blissfully ignorant of What's about to happen? Not or what? What people are about to see? Cyril feels a bit of unease. Sees something unfamiliar. Doesn't know what it is. Thankfully, Aranus Finnegan, you both rolled high enough. Finnegan, you crit that this does not go unnoticed by you. Both of you, from ahead, Aranus, you know that this is where Honey Hollow was. The location is still the location, but it's not. A town anymore. You know, people don't presumably live here anymore. But you know you're getting to where Honey Hollow was, is. And Finnegan, you see this as well. There's a dim and deep magenta glow, just barely, just barely emanating from somewhere deep within these massive openings where Honey Hollow was. 
as if someone had come by and scooped out parts of the snow. You're still far enough away that you can't see down into it, but you can tell that there's a big hole there, and there's this light coming up. Finnegan, since you crit, I'm going to give you a little bit more here, and what you know is that this is magical. Like, this is not here, just naturally, this is some sort of magic. I, uh, as we uh, begin to approach this, I, I point this out to my companions. I've never been here before. I don't know what this is, so. As long as you point it out, everybody else can see it too. It's not hidden from view. Just takes a moment to see and discern. So, Darwin, if you have any thoughts on what you want to do about this magical glow coming from down there, go for it. Do I have any recollection as to what might cause that sort of magical glow? Like, is this something I could have, like, like, I could obviously use Identify, but I'm like, is this like, could this be something I've studied and I understand like, hey, this is the after effect of a nuclear bomb type thing? Well, at this distance, I'm going to say, I'm going to say we're about, about 300 feet away from where Got it. this light is. If you wanted to do such a thing, you would have to get a lot closer for, especially for something like the Identify spell. Yeah. But if you just want to... If you just want to roll an arcana or a history even, just to be like, hey, d- does this ring any bells? You can go for it. Yeah. I'm going to start with an arcana there. Okay. It's uh, 21. Okay. Well, it's light. There's plenty of spells that cause light. You know, prestigitation, mm-hmm. the light spell itself, light. dancing lights, any number Dying of light. other things. <laughs> Turns out there's a lot of ways to make things glow with magic. Um, 21, this doesn't seem to be that if I I, I think the best way to put it is like, it just tastes different. You know, if those are all sweet, this is a little savory. Got it. I think as we're kind of writing, I'm assuming we're writing closer towards it at this point because we have to pass it, right? And if you want to stay on the road, yes, you would have to get closer. It's just a matter of, do you want to stop and debate or do you just want to go? I think as we were riding towards it, towards it, I would come into uh, something to the effect of, Oi, so I'm not sure what that glow is, but it is definitely not a traditional or normal spell, as far as I can tell, from this distance. Hmm. Darwin or Arnis, anything that you want to do? I don't know that there's really anything I can do. I mean, we could get closer, but it's risky. Well, we have to go past it, right? The road goes past it. Yeah, right. so then we could. Right. Off-road down here in the Winter Belt near Honey Hollow is just like snow drifts. Wagons would, it would take a lot of effort. Not, it's not impossible, like you can do it, but getting the wagons out there, it would be slow and just... Ugh. I mean, like, I don't have any Movement speed of like five, maybe. Yeah. But that's going to be with effort. I don't, I don't have anything that is going to tell us what it is i have that but i need to be closer you need to be closer yeah <laughs> how I mean, close do I... you need to be let me look up the spell okay because i'll let him finish and then i was gonna say no what? it's gonna take me a second go ahead okay so like what i can do is just try to get rid of it i have dispel magic i can try to just see if i can make it not a thing but if we don't know what it is then i Okay, so to do identify, I must be able to touch it. Oh. Okay. <sighs> oh, Lord. I don't think I want you doing that. You I don't, don't know what it is. That's why I don't want you doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, let, me, let me check detect magic. Arnis oh, and Darwin have detect have magic enough. as well. Mm-hmm. Arnis and Darwin have done enough stupid like that that we know don't touch it. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> um, so with detect magic, it's a range of 30 feet, but at that, it's just that I can sense the magic. I would learn the school of magic, but that's it. Mm, okay. Up to you. I mean, I already have established that it's a magic yeah, that I yeah. don't recognize because I looked at it and went, well, that's clearly magical light because normal light doesn't usually make that color. Mm hmm. So I think detect magic is not going to be the best use of a, even a ritual at this point. So if we want me to identify it, I can get all up in there and identify it. 
and we'll leave that to the group to decide if that's a route we want to take. Let's get closer and decide if we want to get all up in there. I mean, if nobody else says it, Arnis is going to be like, you're not seriously thinking about, like, touching that, are you? You don't even know what it is yet. We haven't even gotten that close yet. Like, you you haven't even seen the form. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you're still... Yeah, I, I'm not even going to consider it until I'm closer to it. You're still a good, like, 300 feet away. All right. But if we want to get closer, we can get closer. Let's get a bit closer. I'm going <laughs> to get a bit closer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving closer. As you reach the 200 feet mark, let's say. About 200 feet, about 100 feet closer. You can start to see down a little bit into these massive holes of honey hollow and for the most part it just looks like sheer snow drift you know something just came by and whoop, it away darvin and arnis you'll remember everybody at the table we remember there was that very scary bird who just like whomped voided out space yeah yeah so this is still that snow still falls occasionally so it's slowly returning back to normal but it's not, it's going to be a while. Like there it would be a huge storm or something in order to like fill everything in, and and that would be filling it in from the bottom up. It's not going to create a nice little roof anymore. Like you're getting a better sense. Like yep, this is still here. This was still terrible. Clearly, the town, especially after Gostrom kidnapped Liana, basically and went through through the box. Like pretty screwed. But as you get about two hundred feet away, everybody, even the creatures. Horses, Cyril, you all feel this pressure as if this light is weighing you down almost. It's, again, it's not natural, obviously. Light's not heavy, but it's less of a physical weight and it's more of an emotional weight that you feel pressing down on you. As if everybody guys got physically bummed out a little bit all at the same time. Huh. Okay. Shall we carry on? Um, I mean, there's not, doesn't seem like there's much else we can do. Like, I'm not a fan of it, but like, I can't even attempt my thing until we hit 120 feet. So. So wagons and everybody carrying on. Okay. I, I, I guess so, unless somebody else has an idea. It doesn't sound like we do. I got nothing. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Well, then here's what's going to happen. God. You go another 50 feet or so, this pressure, this emotional pressure that you feel, it gets heavier. You can see down a little bit more into the holes. Yes, not far enough to see the ground yet. Not at 150 feet. But you can start to see some cutouts of buildings where the rooftops were sheared in half. But as you hit about this 150 feet mark, Everybody make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing good either. Oh, no. All screwed. All right. Darvin. Uh, 17. Arnis. <laughs> I got a four. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, a four. Finnegan? Uh, Finnegan got a six. What about Cyril? A five. Okay. So well, together then. we got four, five, six. <gasps> five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Everybody. Even, even Darwin there with the 17. I apologize. Everybody. Take 11 psychic damage. Ooh. 11. That's so middling for now don't don't say that don't don't encourage him (laughs) oh don't worry don't worry 11 psychic damage just washes through everybody it's psychic because that's the best damage type for this but it is just emotional mental pain everybody else feels it too the horses like (laughs) <laughs> and they they move to like stop and like get away from whatever is hurting them Ristos 
grabs his head and he goes and lands on the seat, probably like right next to Sam or something. And yeah, everybody kind of like, ah, cries out in like an exasperated type pain. What do you want to do? Well, um, I will let you know that like this is you're in here. It will continue to affect you while you're in here. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to give too much away here. Um, OK, so I have I have a thought. Mm hmm. If I'm going to try my thing, which may or may not work, uh, like, I need to be 30 feet closer than now. Okay. Or we, we could just, you know, put it in a high gear and book it out of here to steal a uh, playbook from the Darwin playbook. True. Mm -hmm. Just expedite our extraction. You got haste. Can you cast it on the horses? <laughs> All the horses. I can cast it on one thing oh why? i can't i can't group cast like you can mm -hmm. i don't have haste so i can't help them go faster right i can make me go faster but that's it darvin's yeah. real fast you could just try to plow through and run at full speed down the road if you wanted to and stop and back up and send a scout in really missing those birds right now <laughs> um Oh, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Something here in Honey Hollow hurts. Hurts your emotions. I, okay. All right. I want to do something weird, if you'll let me. Okay. I'm listening. So, I haven't rolled for, like, divine charges in a while. Mm-hmm. Because we haven't had a need to, but... Sure, let's go ahead and roll some divine charges. Darvin and Arnis, please roll your divine charges. It's a D8, right? No, D8 plus something. Forget that, too. I wrote it down. Hang on. I did not, but I think I had... D8 plus two. I wrote it down. Okay. Okay. And I think Darvin is D6 plus... Yeah, Darvin, you're a D6 plus one. Okay, cool. I'll write that down this time. I rolled minimum. Yeah, rolled a little better than that. So... Darvin, you have two? Yep. All right, and Aranus? Five. Five. And then I need some re rebel charges. Uh, 1d6 plus one. Go ahead and roll that. Oh, man. I had to roll against myself. Sounds... Mm -hmm. Oh, and of course, I rolled a five. So six. Good. Good, good, good. The, the rebellion is strong in you. Yeah. All right. Okay, so... Yes. so you haven't done any divine stuff yet recently, so what are you thinking? Right. So this thing is causing us pain. We can feel that it's like sadness or whatever, right? I, or, it's emotional or, pain. It's I don't know if it's any one type of emotion. You might have to, you know, try to analyze it, make a check to find out exactly what it is you're feeling. But yeah, it's it's painful emotions. I just like I just wonder if I could try to like reach out to it to like comfort it i don't know what that would be or how i would do it or if that's even a thing i can do i i i, I don't know how you would do that either do you have any s communication spells no <laughs> <laughs> this is why i was like i don't know if this is even a thing i can do but like my instinct is to help but i don't really have anything i can do to help I mean, if you don't have any magical ways of helping, um, you have to go with the unmagical ways of helping, which is, you know, actually communicating. It's like yelling, basically. Try that. I mean, that's a start. All right. Do we want to maybe combine these plans? A drive-by therapy session? <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to take us, even if we're going fast, it's going to take us a while to go, like, past. So, like, we can start moving fast, and I can kind of call out as we're moving. <laughs> that see seems I, an option. And see if I can put a little, like, godly will into my voice or something. That is an option. Um, bear in mind that your allies are also taking this damage. Um, they are not all at 100 plus HP. Yeah. That was why my instinct was to maybe move them back. And then go in, but I just I don't I don't know what the best course of action is here. 
I really don't. Yeah, I mean, very few of them are going to survive getting through this if we just tried to barrel through. So it might be better than to just back them up and like... Our options are deal with whatever the fuck this is or go around. We can't really go around. We can't really go off the road because we can't really move off the road. It would be a high exertion effort. I don't think the horses would be your friends for a while after that. Right. I don't think your muscles would be oh. friends to you for a while after that because people would have to get out and push. But sorry, Chris, you're about to say something. How deep is the snow out here? It's like like hundreds of feet, right? It's permafrost, right? I mean, yeah, Honey Hollow is below the snow. Like, it's an entire town below the snow. Right? The yeah. road that exists here, if you remember, is like a basically like royal infrastructure. They come through every once in a while and they tamp down a wide swath of road and they put down planks. So there's actually like good purchase and a fine path. Okay. With the king now dead, it's up to the giants to maintain that effort. But, you know, it's infrastructure. Why wouldn't you? Are you a monster to let your roads go to waste? Um, (laughs) 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 I'm sad. Uh, Social commentary. (laughs) But yeah, so for now, still, okay. the road is a road. But off the road, it's the snow's at least a few feet above what the road level is. And it's not prepared in any sort of way. Okay. Is there a clear is there a clear location where this magic is coming from? Meaning like from where we are, do I see if I wanted to like shoot something at it, would I have a target? I think I think as you get closer, you can tell that this isn't just a general glow, like the town itself, what remains of the town, isn't just all glowing. There is a source down there. Um you would have to get at least a little bit closer to see it. I'm going to say at least another 30, 50 feet closer if you want to actually see what's down there Um, because it's deep. Um, But yes, eventually you would be able to. You know, if I keep going in, I'll be able to see what's making this light. Okay. Um, Unless you can like lob something blindly down in there. If you had a grenade, you could probably hit it. But with an arrow, it was going to be real, real tough. I'm looking at options. Give me a second. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Definitely playing very loose with time right now. Because if we spent the same amount of time in-game as we are real world right now, you'd have had to make another save. I'm, I'm just doing some spell research here, so if y'all want to talk about other things, go for it. Yeah. I mean, not really. Like, I really have one option. And it's like, get everybody kind of back, go in slightly further, and see if I can dispel whatever this is. Like, that's literally the only option I have, except run through so Mm -hmm. darvin what are your thoughts here surprisingly few other than i can drop down inside there if i need to Mm -hmm. Ah. and or maybe use kid to move some snow around i mean work with kid he's not exactly a snow guy but there is ground eventually underneath there oh yeah yeah a wacky idea um, but Darwin is pretty unkillable if we wanted to just throw him in a hole. But Finnegan has a wacky he, idea. Um, we've never attempted this, but I approach Arnis and I ask, uh, and you say, uh, Arnis, as a god, you've empowered your own abilities. Do you have the ability to empower someone else? I don't know. I was wondering if we would ever come to that question. I mean, you know, at a basic level... Yeah, I always have. But what did you have in mind? I well, I know a spell that could essentially create a, a bubble, if you will, that someone could use to travel down there. But it only lasts for about a minute. And I was wondering if you might have the ability to extend that time. Hmm. I honestly don't know. Hmm. <laughs> DM? <laughs> that, that is definitely a DM know? question. Can before I before I bring in an in-universe voice here, which is going to be Reistos, he's absolutely going to yes. chime in here. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> the first question is just which spell is this? Um, we've renamed it the Tamer's Resilient Sphere in the book. It's uh, uh, yes, Luke Res- K's Resilient Sphere. The Resilient Sphere. Let me let me just take a quick look at this. Reistos won't know which spell you're talking about, but he will chime in more on the mechanics of 
or the possibilities of here. Let's see. Um, sphere is immune to all damage. Uh, it's weightless, just large enough to contain the creature object inside. You can use your action to push it. Oh, magical hamster ball. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> okay. The resilient sphere. Certainly not how I ever imagined this spell being used, but I had forgotten you, you either, had it as well. But, yeah. <laughs> That's the whole point of, uh, what do they call these, um, utility spells? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, a very good spell. They're asking this question, and Aranus is unsure. Rystos is quick to chime in, feeling the effects of this aura, so maybe not as polite as he would normally be. <laughs> I know. <sighs> well, Aranus, gods do have the ability to, you know, have things like paladins and clerics and warlocks is that what you're talking about here you want to you want to give your not give um you want to start letting other people tap into your power you want to extend that out to other people it was on it was on the agenda definitely just sooner than i thought and definitely not who i thought uh i mean there's like negative effects to me with that, right? It saps me of something. I mean, you're certainly not trained in doing it, so I can't imagine the first time is going to be painless. Most gods can do this without hurting themselves um, and without really diminishing their power. You're new and untrained, so I can't say for certain what's going to happen to you if you try this. (laughs) Can you try it? Of course. And DM side, just to be clear, this would be like a one-time thing right now. If this is something you wanted to do ongoing, that would actually probably involve Finnegan taking on a level of some sort of like divine class that taps in through Aranus. Yeah, that's that's what I had assumed. Okay. This is a this is a desperation one-off. It's a Hail Mary, if you will, or a Hail Aranus, if you will. Please don't. Um Confused, Rystos. Are you telling me to not do this, or are you telling me to do it? What are you worried about? It's not going to kill you. Well, I mean, you don't know that. <sighs> I mean, pretty sure. I, look, all I'm saying, if you want to do this, you can. It just may not go very well. You might hurt yourself. You could hurt Finnegan. I don't know. <sighs> this is like trying to pull a William Tell without practicing here. Oh, not shit. that you would shoot Finnegan in the head. That's a bad example. Never mind. But Forget no, I said I, that. I, no, I get, I get what you're saying, though, right? It's basically like shooting blind. Like, it's, it's not like I have any practice at it. Mm-hmm. You can. We will have dice, and that will determine what actually happens. Like, it's something you can do. But Rystos isn't going to tell you to do it or not to do it. He's just going to say, like, this is something you could try. You might hurt yourself, but oh well. He's fairly confident. Well, he's not confident, but, you know, he's assuming it's not going to kill you because you're a god now. And the things that can kill gods are limited. Um, well, okay. In which case, then I'm going to I'm going to throw it back to Finnegan and be like, you heard what I said. I could get hurt, but that's, that's whatever. That's on me. I'll take the risk. But you could also get hurt. Is that something you're willing to risk? There seems no other way around it at this point, unless Darwin wants to take a walk. But he wouldn't be able to determine what's going on once he got there. That's That's the the problem. problem. Yeah. Darwin could always accompany whoever's in the sphere. Yes. He would still still get hurt, but Darwin has a good amount of unkillability, especially Mm -hmm. with his 15 key points. Yeah, that's not a terrible idea. Um, It's just a matter of, you know, do you want to try? Okay. Before we even started this discussion, I'm like, I, I, I should have said this before we started getting into the weeds here, right? I want to move everybody back. You mean back up out of the, yeah, out of the, the like, hurtful. Yes. The zone. <laughs> All right. No, that's fine. That's fine. Step one is, hey, let's take a step back and actually talk about what we want to do. Right. This is the discussion. Yeah. The rice dose is still irritable, but he's kind of always a little bit irritable. If you want to do it, okay. This is a fourth level spell, and you would be channeling your power through somebody else, uh, which is something you haven't done before. 
So not only is this going to take divine charges, but there's going to be a roll just to see if anything else goes wrong. I could always use my rebellious charges, of course, but I do want you to have a roll so we can just see, like, how well does Arnus actually do any of this stuff? Okay. Um, let's see, where are your divine charges? Uh, empowered spells, that's what I need. Empowered spells V3. So part of this is just going to be channeling it through Finnegan. What is the goal here with this empowerment? What are you looking to empower? Just the duration? Really just the duration. Like uh, My understanding of the spell is it's going to do what we need it to do. We just need more time because it's going to take more than a minute to get into the thing and figure out what's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, you just take that ball right up to the edge and you can just drop in. Um, oh, Lord. Or, yeah, you could just go up to the edge and turn around. Um, that's mm-hmm. also possible. You don't have to drop in. I, I think getting to the the lip there would be sufficient. I could give you a bunch of information once you actually have eyes on this. It just would normally hurt to do so. So just increasing the duration. All right. I'm going to couch this in saying, hey, I could change my mind as how this might work later. But right now, what I'm seeing is like, hey, if this were your own spell and you just wanted to increase the duration, I would ask for two charges. But since you're also going to be channeling it through somebody else, I'm going to say that's another two charges. So this would be four divines. Okay. Four divine charges. Okay. Okay. As long as you're comfortable with that. I mean, I don't like it, but I see the logic. So yeah, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) And then we need a roll. We need a roll. All right. This is how mechanically it would, it's going to work. Um, Roll Arcana Charisma, but without proficiency, since you haven't done this before, which just amounts to you rolling d20 plus Charisma modifier. Because Charisma is your casting stat. This isn't about magical knowledge. This is about you using magic, but just in a way that you don't know how to do it. You see that, right? You see that? I didn't touch that. You see that? It's either a 1 or it's a 20. 20. She definitely rolled a 20. I definitely crit. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. You can see that, right? <laughs> okay. Woo. Finnegan, who are you casting this around? It's got to be myself. I've got the highest arcana bonuses. And if someone's yep. got to go in and look at this magic, it's got to be me. Okay. Okay. On a crit, especially with this spell, Arnis, this spell is just concentration. As long as you can maintain your concentration. Okay. It's good. Uh, and if you're not standing in the painful emotional area, there's going to be no reason for your concentration to break at the moment. Okay. Finnegan, I'm guessing you're going in alone without Cyril. Yes. Okay. Darvin, are you accompanying Finnegan? Yes. All right. Finn, what's your speed? 30? Um, let me double check, but I believe it's 25. Ooh, so... No, it's 30. It's 30. Yeah. I was going to say. Little people. I, was like, I was like, even I'm 30. No, it's, uh, it's Cyril that's slower because she's so big. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She big. Stubby legs. So usually that's reserved for halflings, gnomes, dwarves being below 30. Okay. In which case, Darvin, this is your call. Do you want to run ahead of Finnegan to get a glimpse first? Or do you want to keep pace with Finnegan? I'm going to... You could also push and increase my speed. Um, yeah, you can also both use the dash action. So, I mean, that would boost Finnegan up to... 60 feet around and Darwin up to 110 feet around. (laughs) Effectively getting you to the lip in one round. Finnegan, it doesn't matter for Finnegan. He's protected in the bubble. Ah. (laughs) Um, So yeah, it's just a question up to you, Darwin. Yeah, let's do the dash and try to keep pace though so we get there at the same time. Okay. Let's just do this thing then. Let's just do the damn thing. I see what time (laughs) it is. (laughs) Let's just do the damn thing. Oh, Lord. Entering into the heavier area of this light, this effect. Darwin, please make another wisdom saving throw. Okay, that's a 23. Oh, shit. I have proficiency on all saves now, which helps. Oh, look at you. No, that definitely helps. You push through the first, like, 50 feet of this aura. You feel the extra weight. Like, you can feel the emotional pressure on you. It's just not getting to you this time. Nice. You're able to to, to push past it. Stay focused. Finnegan, 
you're in your bubble. You're fine. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you're in your bubble. You're fine. <laughs> Darvin, as you reach the lip of this giant scooped out city, make one more wisdom saving throw. Okay. Ooh, that's an 11. Oh, no. Gonna hurt a little bit more. The pressure doubles down on you. But then we'll get into what everybody sees. Ugh. Darwin, that's 20 psychic damage. Okay. Got a second die for being this close. And rolled higher. But here, from the lip of the snow, looking down into Honey Hollow. Again, the city's been wiped out. Giant parts of the snow and the city have just been voided out by that creature. The snow continues to fall down in. Everything's got a very light coating. Looking down from the lip here, Finnegan and Darvin, you can see the source of this light. It is not an object. It is a person. And actually, you both... It takes a moment. Darvin, you're recovering from the pain. Finnegan, you're looking through the shimmer of this resilient sphere. It takes a moment. But you've seen this person before, actually somewhat recently. The outline takes a moment. You recognize it. Because the last time you saw them was in Caravel. That's Liana down there, just going through something. She is emotionally hurt, and she's letting it out here. And it's just encompassing the city. What do you want to do? Oh, we're not there yet, right? We're... You're at the, the lip of the snow looking down on her. That's what I thought. You can see her down there, and if you wanted to shout out to her, she could probably hear you uh, and respond. But right now, she's, she's not looking at you. She's just kind of like staring off into the distance. So Darwin or Finnegan, what would you like to do? I mean, we could drop down. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. Or call out. Or pray. Finnegan, if you drop down, I think you'd be fine. I think the bubble will protect you. Darwin has slow fall, so he's slow. Plus it's snow, so it's like, oh wait, no, that doesn't help. That makes it faster. (laughs) In terms of where we're at, yeah, you're there at the edge of the snow. Liana's down there. You could call out to her if you wanted to. Right now she's not paying any attention to you. She probably knows you're there just because... She's divine, uh, and at least Darwin would remember this. Like her ability does allow her to connect emotionally and mentally to other people. This is just a, this is just a more sad and depressed version of it, and it hurts. So yeah, it's up to you what you want to do at this point. The God in pain down below. Um, you could try to dispel magic on her if you wanted to, but as far as identify goes, yeah, that's just some divine magic. Mm-hmm. Or you could try to reason with her. And talk her out of it. That might be the way to go, but it's probably better if... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do much in this situation. I have no connection to her beyond the fact that I met her. In, it's the equivalent of, oh, I saw you at that giant party. Mm-hmm. We were on a group call together, remember? <laughs> we were on the Zoom call together, right? <laughs> and she's probably not too thrilled with me or Arnis. So I'm not sure we're the best ones to talk her down either. <laughs> what about, here's an idea. Let's just camp out for the night and see if she just goes away. <laughs> Thanks. It's an idea. It's an idea. It's up to you. I mean, you could try to talk to her from here uh, just to get yeah. at least like get a vibe check or something. But if you want to turn right around and run away, that's up to you as well. No, I think we should try to talk to her. All right. Uh, Darvin, what do you say? I didn't say I talked to her. It's better if Finnegan does it. She hates me, maybe. (laughs) But Finnegan doesn't know know her. (laughs) He's probably more persuasive than me. He's really not. I don't know. If you want to talk mechanically, what are your persuasion bonuses, Darwin and Finnegan? He thinks he is, but... Plus four. Oh, yeah. Finnegan? (laughs) Finnegan's got a persuasion of... Wait for it... Zero. Uh, gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman's bagel. <laughs> so mechanically, 
numbers alone, Darwin would be better at this. I mean, you both kind of snubbed her in that group call, uh, but it, does she hold either of you responsible for that? I don't know. Was Darwin actually here in Honey Hollow before it fell? Yes, he was. But does she hold that personally against you? We'll have to find out. I guess we will. But, but yeah, that's <laughs> something I wish I could answer without you doing anything, but I can't. I know. <laughs> or, oh no, because she's going to recognize that I was on the group call and be like, or he could just leave and I could be like, hey lady, could you be a little less depressed? Me and my friends are trying to pass through. <laughs> but she's going to recognize me. <laughs> yes, she... <laughs> She would recognize me. <laughs> um, and also, could what an asshole crazy? thing to say. Could you just, like, seriously, like, for, for, like, real quick, like, just stop crying so that we can just, like, walk by. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Imagine you're on a bus and there's just this lady crying. And you're like, hey, stop being so fucking depressed. I'm trying to ride the bus here. Uh, you can go back <laughs> right back to crying as soon as we're done. <laughs> oh, my God. My stop's, like, two stops away. Then you can cry. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, your emotions are hurting people lady <laughs> but yeah if anybody wants to try to reach out to her now's the time yes yes all right Dar. oh dear i'm just gonna call out liana that's <laughs> that's all i can think of that's, that's fine um darvin you call out to liana she turns there's no change in the light whatsoever. Uh, she lifts her head to you and looks at you, and you can feel you can feel the connection deepen, not in a painful way, not yet. Aww. I'm just saying, like you haven't pissed her off, and you haven't made her more depressed or less depressed. She's just focused on you now, but you can you can feel that more, and she can feel what you're feeling. Darvin, what are your emotions right now? Um. Mostly trepidation and some remorse. That's both both good, both fine. Both honest answers. I like it. She looks up. Her look has definitely changed since the last time you saw her here in Honey Hollow. One, she's not focused on holding a whole city together, or the people of a city together and alive, but she's straightened and cut short her hair. It is darker now. Her eyes look a little bit more sunken. She is going through her like blue phase, her emo phase, her goth phase, however you <laughs> want to say it. Like, but yeah, her emotions are affecting her outward appearance as well, and she's she's being honest about that in a physical way. It's just less there's less joy in her than there was before. Her emotions are regret and loss and a new one in there that you hadn't felt from her before. Before in all of your interactions with her, the main thing that she, as far as like outlook that she tried to portray and encourage was compromise. And that's just not there anymore. Like that, that whole like compromise mentality, like you can feel like she's not, she's not reaching out to you and she's not letting you reach out to her as a way to compromise and better understand one another. It's, it's more solid than that, but she looks at you. She feels your feelings. You can feel hers, and you can feel the connection deepen. Darvin, I didn't think we'd be seeing each other again so soon. Why have you come back? Just passing through, mostly, but what's going on here? I'm in mourning, Darvin. This place is a place of pain. And loss and failure. And I am in mourning. Darvin, make another wisdom saving throw. You've been in here long enough again, and she is kind of letting out some emotions, and this kind of waves over you again. Oops. 13. 21 psychic damage, Darvin. It's just her raw emotion this hurt that she feels is now extending out to you and you're feeling it as well. Just passing through then. I see. Your friends are all here. She definitely sees Finnegan there in the bubble. They are. Well, what's stopping you? You had no problem passing through last time. It was different. 
And what's stopping us is you. Do you <laughs> do you have to stay here? Morning? I mean, I know you have to mourn, but it don't seem like the healthiest. Are you suggesting I not mourn or not mourn here, Darvin? I think I'm suggesting that you not mourn here. Oh, this is not going to end well. This is rough. Oh, this, this is going to end so poorly. Um... No, I don't mean it like get out of our way. I mean it like, you know, you're literally stuck in a hole. Find a change of scenery or something. She is literally and emotionally stuck in a hole. Yes. I just came here to do one last bit of good, and then I will be on my way. I will take my morning with me, Darvin. What good are you doing? Right, I know how you meant that. Um, so I'm not going to be a jerk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're still at some distance, but she's going to point a short ways away from her over to some rubble. And maybe you didn't see it before because you were focused on her or the light that she was emitting or because you were focused on the pain. But she points off to the side a little bit. And in this dim light, Darvin and Finnegan, you can both see this. She is motioning over to that half of the teleportation box that Gossram used to carry her away back into Capris. I'm here to destroy this. Without this, the city may not have fallen. Maybe not as many would have had to die. Gossram's already been punished for his acts, but I can't, I, but this reminds me, this is a reminder of how easy it is to fail and to lose and to run. And I want it gone. Okay. Can we help? Hmm. First, Darvin, make another wisdom saving throw. It hurts being in her presence. She's not, she's not making it any stronger. She's not, she's not strengthening this aura, but you are still in it. So make another wisdom saving throw. I got a 27. Okay. No damage this time. Excellent. Was that a crit? Yes, it was. Do let me know when you crit, because I'm, I'm more than happy to, to be extra generous on that. Getting the save automatically means no damage, but getting a crit in this moment, uh, you know, you're able to connect to her a little, like, you, you can feel more of her, and you feel a part in there when you offer to help. God, I love that you crit on this offer to help, and she's almost taken aback. At first, it's a little bit in disbelief, like, now you want to help? But it's also just like, nobody's asked that. Nobody's offered that since Gosrim, and that was partially selfish. And she doesn't know what's in this for you, so she's like, oh, this is a kindness, a gesture, perhaps sincerity. Can you help? Um, well, once this half is destroyed, the other must be as well. It's still in Capris. I was just going to walk back. I've got plenty of time. But if you were to destroy the one on this side, after I return, I could destroy the other half much more quickly. Great. I think we can handle that. Yeah. Even if I still don't understand the logistics because my brain is broken. I mean, the easiest step first would be to try to dispel the magic on it. And then if that doesn't do it, we hit it with a bunch of damage. Okay. And this isn't a divine artifact. This was made by the, uh, uh, this was made in the frost swamp, you know? Uh, yeah. Liana wants to destroy both halves. Destroying one should in theory be sufficient, but if you leave half a portal open, what does it go to then? Um, who knows? But she is hurt and she's depressed and she wants to destroy the things that make her feel hurt and depressed. Plus, this was used against her. It was supposed to be a means of safety, but then, then so many people died. So many. So she wants us to destroy the thing here and now? Or go to... After she goes through it. She's yeah, going to go she's... through it. She yeah. goes through it, we destroy it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all it would be. In the meantime, of, like, of course you do have Liana with you 
now, and you also do have a doorway to Capris with you right now. Obviously, only Finnegan and Darwin know that at the moment, but soon everybody else in the party will. And I don't know if anybody's going to want to do anything with that information, make use of the box, or just have a chance to talk to Liana, who's here and is divine. And dealing psychic damage by the, I don't know, mm-hmm. six seconds or so. Uh, about every round. round or so. But, uh, but I mean, that's certainly not something that she has to have on all the time. This isn't a static aura. This is part of her divine abilities here. Um, but it's just me and Finnegan up here, right? Mm-hmm. At the moment, yeah. Um, you want to offer to help. She feels it's sincere. Hmm. Hmm. So Darwin, Liana has heard your offer. She's taken it with all sincerity. Darwin, Darwin, if you and your friends want to aid me in this effort, in this corrective action, I will accept it. Please. She motions with her hand, and it's like a curtain being drawn as this aura just gets shifted away from you and from the road. Uh, so you're no longer in it, Darvin. She kind of just pushes it all back behind her. You can see it. It's like, imagine shining a floodlight at a person and seeing this huge shadow behind them. But in this case, it's just that huge, dim, magenta light. And it's just all behind her right now. She's just kind of like shifted, like shifted the aperture on the light. And it's just back there now. Please, Darvin. Bring your friends down here. We can take care of this. First, I guess, Darvin, do you want to invite everybody to come down? And then second, does everybody actually want to go down? Uh, Who's every... I guess it's everybody, huh? Since she... Whoever wants to. Yeah, sure, why not? I don't think the horses could get down. Um, (laughs) But people could climb down. They would probably not appreciate the significance anyway. The subtleties might be lost on them. Yeah. So yeah, Aranus, do you want to go down? Uh, y- your allies certainly want to. Rystos has some trepidation, but that's just because it's another god down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leon is not the worst of them in his eyes. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going down. Okay. Are you just going to jump down in the bubble, or are you going to let that drop and then, and then climb down? Oh, I'm riding the bubble down. That way I don't have to worry about climbing. I can just like bubble down, and then when I'm down, I'll undo the bubble. Absolutely, you can. And Cyril gets to, like, burrow through the snow to come down and find us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Arnis, do you want to go down there? Yes. Okay, just making sure. I don't know how, how much you want to avoid the emotions of Liana, but okay. In which case, then, everybody, except for the horses, everybody takes their time to climb down. Finnegan just drops down in the bubble. Mm-hmm. Darvin... You could just jump down if you want. Yep. Your slow fall. Okay. Almost everybody climbs down. Cyril burrows through the snow. Rather easily snows. Nothing compared to dirt and earth. And Finnegan drops down in the bubble. There's a slight... A little, like, kind of bouncing give sensation as it hits the ground. Darwin just jumps down. Thanks to his slow fall, he lands unharmed. And once everybody's down there, Finnegan lets the resilience fear drop. And the city of Honey Hollow, what remains of it, is broken and scattered. There are definitely bone fragments from the withered orcs who were down here, who instantly turned as soon as Liana went through that portal. There are no doubt halflings somewhere in the snow. The city... The city is not whole. The city is not livable in any comfortable way anymore. There could be nooks and crannies. There could be rooms, areas of the town that have been undisturbed. But as a whole, it's still a lost town. Liana stands just outside of where Earl Moore's office used to be. The teleportation box back to Capris, short distance away. And her light and her mourning and her depression haven't gone anywhere she's simply redirected it it's glowing off of her like a long shadow 
But she came here. She came here with the mission to... She can't undo, but she came here to prevent further misuse of this. And even without being in her emotional aura, her connective aura, that allows her to share thoughts and emotions with other people, anybody who's met Liana before or seen even recent images of her before can tell that there's a steadfastness, there's an assuredness in her gaze that wasn't there before. The ideals of compromise that she was supporting before have dropped away, and she has a new outlook. Whether or not that's permanent, time will tell. But here and today, she is looking to do her best, and doing her best to make amends, to recover, and more importantly, just to prevent anything like that from happening again. And perhaps, with your help, she will be successful. And with that, we'll bring this chapter to a close. But the story will always continue. Thanks again to all of our Patreon patrons for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash Podcast and pick out a level that's right for you. Before we go, I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at the $5 and up tiers. At the $5 city council level, thank you, Shannon DeMello. At the $10 mayor level, thank you, Christopher DeMello. At the $15 governor level, thank you, Paul Calicott, Phoenix Bryan, and Sierra Jones. Thank you for listening to this chapter in Seasons of Skyrend. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find us. If you want to chat, we're on Twitter at Skyren Podcast. You can join our Discord server, or you can email us at skyrenpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us online at skyrenpodcast.com. As always, thanks to Daryl Barnes for creating our theme music. You can find them on Twitter at Daryl Barnes underscore. We also want to thank the talented at Gabby underscore Desu on Twitter for our fantastic podcast art. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on Seasons of Skyrend. <laughs>